Welcome to your spooky video lecture for KDM. This is in lieu of class on Halloween, October 31st. And I thought today that we would review sample problem 10.2 in your book, which is a very nice way to show you that you know a lot more than you think you know. So, brew yourself up your favorite beverage. I have a nice hot cup of tea. Make sure your calculator's handy. And let's get started. So, this is simple problem. 10.2. This is on page 694 in the book. And what the sample problem says is that you have a fan. And this fan consists of a round disc that has two blades affixed to it. If we do it in perspective, it's going to look something like this. This disc is driven in the center by an electric motor. Well, there's our bully drive system. The disc itself is steel. It's got a radius of 0 0.3 meters and it is 0 0.0398 meters thick. The two blades that are mounted on it have a mass of 10 kilograms each. They are 1 meter square, so 1 meter by one meter, and they each have a thickness of five millimeters. Now we're also told that there's some air resistance that acts on these two fan blades as this whole thing spins around. Or if we're looking at a plan view, it's going to spin around. That air resistance can be modeled with the equation F is equal to A V squared A, where A is the area of the blade. V is a linear velocity at the center of the blade. And K is a constant. That constant K is given as 0 0.025 Newton seconds squared per meter to the fourth. Just to double check then, or the source calculation, we have Newton second squared over meters to the fourth for K. For linear velocity, we have meters per second, and that's squared. And for the area, we have meters squared. So if I cancel out squared, squared meters, so the meters cancel out entirely, this is second squared, so my second squared cancels out the one in the constant, and I do end up with a result of Newton's force. So that makes sense. This motor, we are told, generates a torque of 25 Newton meters. So, so far so good. Now comes the hard part. We're being asked two things about this system. The first thing is find the terminal velocity. So that's appropriately scary for Halloween terminal, it means the end. And further, that velocity is the angular velocity. We are also being asked to find the angular acceleration. and the motor power at an angular velocity of 20 radians per second. So being asked that kind of gives us a nice check. If our terminal velocity 
ends up being less than that in 20 radians per second, we probably did something wrong. So, what do we do now? What's our first step? I'm sure all of you sitting at home watching this wonderful video are screaming out what step one is. Step one is, get your pen working. There we are. Step one. And step one is, don't panic. Step two, of course, is equally important. Step two is, do something easy. So, what we begin by doing something easy. We know that to solve this, and the reason we know is because we already said it, we're going to use, we didn't say, we're going to use de Lambert's principle. And de Lambert's principle states that the sum of the torques in the system will be equal to zero. So those torques can come from a number of different sources. Certainly we can have an externally applied torque, kind of like the torque coming from an electric motor. We can have a resistance torque coming from an applied force. And of course, we're going to have a torque that comes from the resistance to acceleration that this inertial body will have. In order to calculate that, we need to know what the mass moment of inertia of the system is. So that, I think, kind of qualifies as something a little easy. Let's take a look at that. Our system consists of these two blades and the spinning disk. The spinning disks are fun and easy to play with. Let's look at that. If you take a look at the table, which unfortunately is not labeled, but it's on page 690 in your book, you will see a number of different pieces of information talking about the mass moment of inertia of different shapes. For a disk, see if I can draw one reasonably well, kinda, that's spinning on its axis, which by convention is labeled xx in your book, the mass moment of inertia is given to us as i is equal to m r squared over 2 where m is the mass of the disk, r is its radius. So, so far, so good. Let me go ahead and figure that out. We know, from the setup to the problem, that our disk is 0 0.3 meters in radius, and has a thickness of 0 0.0398. So in order to calculate the mass of this disk, we need to figure out its volume and multiply it by its density. The density is given a seal. So I happen to have in my head, and you can look it up, that the density for steel is equal to 8,000 kilograms per cubic meter. For the disk, in order to figure out its volume, we need to get its area, and we'll multiply it by its thickness. The area of the disk, A, is equal to pi r squared. So for us, that's going to be pi times 0 0.3 meters squared, which is going to give us a value, let's see, 3.14159265.3 squared times of 0 0.283 meters squared. The volume, then, is equal to the area times the thickness. So, 0 0.283 times 0 0.0398. Hmm, that doesn't look very good. I guess I'll have to do. So we have the 0 0.283. 0 0.0398, multiply it, and we get a volume of 0 0.011 meters cubed. If I multiply this volume with the density, I'll end up with the mass of the disk. So, 
8,000, and that gives me a mass for this disk of 90 kilograms. The radius of the disk is already given to us as 0.3 meters. So just think about that a little bit in context. It's about 12 inches, so this is a 24-inch spinning piece of steel that weighs 90 kilograms. It's not inconsequential. So if I plug my value in for the equation, I calculate that I is equal to 90 kilograms times 0.3 meters squared divided by 2. And that gives me a mass moment of inertia. Let's see, 90.3 divided by 2 of 4.05 kilogram meters squared. So far, so good. But that's only part of the system. We've got these two blades to deal with as well. The blades are a different animal. Again, if we look at the table on page 690, we find that for a rectangle, the equation for the mass moment of inertia is I is equal to M times B squared plus C squared over 12. And in common with the spinning disk, the table gives us a little picture to show us what each of these values means. So I'm going to try and reproduce that here. I have this spinning rectangular thing. X. And they're labeled, these signs are labeled as C, H, and B. In our case, then, we can look fairly carefully and say that C is based on our definition of the blades, one meter, and that B, which is the thickness, is five millimeters. So, move my camera just a little bit. Therefore, I is equal to 10 kilograms, pulled from what they told us initially in the problem, 10 kilograms, times b squared, which is 5 millimeters. We're going to need to adapt to that or convert it to meters. So 5 millimeters divided by 1,000, and that would be millimeters per meter squared, plus c, which is 1 meter squared, over 12. And again, let's bring out our handy dandy calculator. So I've got 5 millimeters divided by 1,000 and square it. 1 meter, square it, add the two together, multiply that times 10 kilograms, and then divide the whole mass by 12. I did something wrong. Let's try this again. 5, 1,000 divide, 5, 1,000 divide, squared, 1, 10 times 12 divide, there we go. So, I for the blade is 0 0.83 kilogram meters squared. Hey, I'm going to stop here for a moment because I just saw somebody pull into my driveway. And we'll resume on a separate file. So take a sip of your lovely drink. Make sure I did the calculations right so far. And we'll be right back.